Hi Capricorn, welcome to your March video. It's for Capricorn Sun, Moon, Rising, or Venus. We're going to talk about your general overall kind of theme or feeling for the month of March, uh, what kind of challenges you'll face, the vibes that you're putting out there. We're going to look specifically at your finances, at your love life, whether you're single or coupled, and then we're going to look at like your personal growth or development or your emotions, and then as well as giving you a crystal of the month, and spoiler alert, I think you might have already seen it on Instagram or Facebook where I posted your crystal of the month, but it is the most beautiful of all 12 signs in my opinion. So let's go ahead and get started. Okay, Capricorn, what's going on for you in general? And like, this is so weird because of all of the Claire's, you know, there's Claire Audience, Claire Sentience, Claire Voyance, all that stuff. Um, lately, I've been a lot more Claire Sentient, whereas my abilities kind of started as Claire Cognizance or Claire Voyance kind of stuff. Um, and I'm feeling a lot of uneasiness for you guys. Like, um, so this could be gastrointestinal issues but it could also be just like anxiety and stuff like that so um if that resonates for you pay close attention <laughs> your general feeling overall and they're saying like no drama is good right you're trying to avoid drama um but the, and i think the way that you're doing this is potentially by avoidance okay now what they're saying is that it's not actually bringing you more harmony it's just kicking the can further down the road is essentially what's happening here so they're saying like ultimately whatever kind of situation here that you're trying to avoid it's not a major catastrophe it's that you and another entity maybe you in the workplace you and another person something like that you have the same goal or intention at heart but there's little um, communication chasms or disagreements that are becoming the focus and inhibiting you from kind of achieving said goal, okay? And so they're saying the way past this, though, is to really go within and deal with it instead of just pushing that can further down the road because it's only going to make things spiral or get worse. Kind of like, you know, like student loans, for example. Um, you don't pay them because they're too expensive, right? And so then you just kind of ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. And then all of a sudden um, you've defaulted and now you can't work out a deal with them. Whereas if you would have just dealt with it right away, you totally could have. It's that sort of a thing. They're like, but there's this like hopeless energy that's sort of inhibiting you from doing that. Now, why do you have that hopeless energy? And they're saying... Um, because you already know what there is to know about the situation, but you're really focused on the little details instead of the big picture. And so that's where these chasms are kind of coming in. What kind of vibes are you putting out? And they're saying that you're very insightful, that you're logical, but intuitive at the same time. Um, they're saying that you just, you care a lot about the things that are important to you, right? Like you, you cherish certain things. And you don't want to be without those things. And you just kind of feel like if I invest further time or energy with this, it's going to disrupt my harmony and potentially the things that I'm holding close to my heart, whether those are conceptual things or actual material things of value. Okay. Now, let's look specifically at your, actually, I want to switch decks here. I'm going to give you something to keep in mind regarding that situation. As far as, whoa, as far as your lesson goes, and they say it's about discipline. Okay, so you're, you're blending both your logic and your intuition as we talked about. And so this is a very third eye kind of energy, but they're saying, you know, you can accomplish anything that you put your mind to. So the fact that you're not necessarily on the same page as other people um, doesn't mean that they're wrong, doesn't mean that you're wrong. It's just kind of like put that bigger picture in mind and then start making, then you're going to naturally start making the right steps towards that. So the guidance is to be silent 
pay attention and simply observe with your eyes and ears the physical feelings that are happening inside of you and then all around you. And maybe that's where that uneasiness is coming from. If by not addressing a specific issue that's going on in your life right now is continually making you feel like a little bit down, um, stressing you out, and you're not dealing with it, um, you know, what do you want to feel like that every day for is essentially what they're saying, okay? Now, looking specifically at your finances, what are the energies in general for the month of March 2018? And they're saying you're starting to get what you want. Yay! So there might be some finances coming through from you. Maybe it's a tax return. Maybe it's something you worked hard for. It's not very specific. It's just like, yay, something good is coming, okay? So what are your challenges? And they're saying... Um, finding your focus in regards to, you know, maybe how you want to earn your money or, you know, what kind of different income streams you want to um, pull in. They're saying you are a limitless being and you can manifest whatever you desire into physical reality. And you should be able to start to see that this month in regards to your finances. They're saying that um, your finances are starting to finally heal. You may have had some issues in the past, um, and even if they weren't like necessarily issues, you're just become you're coming into like a better energy or relationship with money because money is actually an energy. Okay, so if we have positive feelings about money, we naturally attract more, and so then the more the positive we're feeling as we're attracting more, the more and more we're making. And this is why the rich get richer and the poor get poorer, okay? And so you're finally kind of starting to get onto this right track in regards to your emotional response or relationship with money, and therefore you should see more of it. And so they're saying, um, instead of just kind of accepting situations as they are and not trying to change them in regards to your finances, you need to actually put some effort forth here. They're saying that, um, that you need to be around people more. You might have kind of gone into solitude a little bit, and that's not good for you in the month of March, um, especially in regards to finances. Perhaps this is because you might meet somebody who offers you a good opportunity or the appropriate, you know, networking connection, something like that. Maybe they refer you a client, but it's important in March um, because that'll only potentiate your capacity in order to get more of that wealth or abundance. So in regards to your love life, if you are a single Capricorn, what do I see for you? They're saying um, you just might not want to put the work into meeting new people, which I don't blame you. I mean, it's it's hard. It's tough. They're saying like this isn't necessarily like a defense mechanism or anything. You're just not feeling it necessarily in the month of March. And they're saying it's because you're sick of giving to people who don't give back to you in the same capacity or regard, right? Like it's a lot of energy to expend to get to know someone only to be disappointed. But what they're saying is as the month progresses, um, you might want to start at least talking to somebody. Like, um, like reaching out, you know, through like Bumble or Tinder or, um, you know, Facebook messaging, like written communication, text messaging would be good, even if you're not in the mood to see somebody. They're saying you feel like you're going to end up to be disappointed in your love life. Um, and this is because of some past either relationship that ended or friendship that ended. And they're like, you're still in a healing process, which is part of the reason why you're feeling the way that you do. And maybe that lack of enthusiasm to go out and meet new people. But ultimately, if you turn your head to spirit and you really rely on your angels, guides, you know, God, whatever, the universe, um, they will put better people in your path, people who are more caring and loving that will give back to you in the same capacity that you give to them. They're saying like, they're going to put an unselfish person in your path. Sure, maybe their situation isn't 100% perfect right now, um, which is maybe why you shouldn't go out of your way to attempt to try to build a relationship with them. But at least starting the communication bridge um, would be good while they kind of sort their own stuff out so that you could be in a better place to potentially um, turn that into a relationship down the road. They're saying have a lot of confidence. This is not a traditional way about going about finding love. Um, however, this is the best way for you in March to kind of manipula manipulate the energies in your favor in order to draw someone in coming April, May, June, you know? Um, oh, they're saying it really doesn't have to be that hard at work. <laughs> okay, so what kind of vibes are you putting out there to potential suitors? And they say that you're looking for something long-term and long-lasting, and um, you're not looking for 
for, you know, like one night stands for fuck buddies. And I think that's part of why initiating that conversation and sustaining it is important because then the other person knows, like, if you're not just like, um, love them and leave them kind of energy that, you know, this is something that they would want for the long term because this is some, because what you want is something long term. You know, we're not always in that frame of mind where we want something that's, you know, everlasting. And this is going to make sure that the people who are coming into contact with you and continue to contact you are going to be people who are aligned with that ultimate long-term desire. For those of you who are coupled, what does March look like for you? They're saying you're being entirely unselfish with your relationship. They're saying um, things look pretty good, actually. You might be kind of enjoying this happily ever after situation where you're like just enjoying the company of your partner they're saying that this is making you feel really good about yourself it's boosting your self-esteem in one way or another and they're saying um you know by not trying to control situations and things like that this relationship is moving in a direction of harmony so how is your partner viewing you and they're saying um you know your very earthy energy kind of self where you're a little bit serious and practical but you're also reliable and stable and they appreciate that about you now how else are they viewing you um they're viewing you as potentially like going through a shift or a change like changing your priorities and all, for a lot of you it's actually becoming more spiritual or more intuitive and kind of walking down that path they're saying that um as far as like your emotions go, that you're leaving old yucky emotions in the past and kind of like moving through things. So I think, you know, if you have any resentment or grudges or things that you needed to forgive with your partner, this is the month that you would be best served to do so. There's a lot of harmony as a result and a lot of appreciation for both parties. They're saying um, this be makes your relationship a lot more strong and bonded in regards to like um, teamwork and things like that. Not like in a codependent kind of way, but it's just like you become more of a team. So awesome news for Capricorn couples. I wanted to switch back actually to singles quickly and give you a, a tad of guidance. And they're saying... In regards to love, it's not necessarily the luckiest time for you. You're going to be more abundant financially than in regards to love, but it is a building time. And then for those of you who are coupled, they're saying, um, you know, watch out for those codependent tendencies, but it's, it's actually not really likely. They're saying like finding your own hobbies and things like that outside of the relationship so that when you come together and you're like talking and bonding and sharing with one another will only help your relationship. Now, looking at your personal growth or development in the month of March, what are your challenges going to be? And they're saying there's some sort of an imbalance, okay? And they're saying that um, you could be a little bit, you could be a little bit inclined this month to be sort of more judgmental than usual. Um, and that causes discord or disharmony in your own life, okay? So why is this? What's going on? They're saying it's because of the people that you're communicating with. Um, not to bag on like Gemini's, but you know, like they have a tendency to be a little bit gossipy. And so um, I'm not saying distance yourself from them, but don't necessarily believe everything that you hear. And I'm not saying it's only Gemini's, like it could be anyone, you know, rumors you hear, things like that. Try not to be judgmental. They're saying that um, this will disturb that energy of abundance that you have financially because it lowers your vibration. So try to see alternative perspectives inside the situations because I think people are going to be telling you lies or rumors, um, you know, and it doesn't, it's not going to come necessarily from one specific sign. It could just be a miscommunication that spirals, you know, like the game telephone. And so this is very important for you this month because while you're coming into this more like emotionally balanced state with all the Pisces and everything in March, what they're saying is, um, you know, as you're clearing old things out, making way for new that this is just going to disturb your harmony and peace a little bit. So keep that in mind. What else do they want to say? Um, they're saying you might not be super confident this month in regards to, 
you know, like your emotional state. And that's normal because with the Pisces and basically everything except for the moon this month, your emotions could, should be going this way and then this way and then this way and then this way. And you're not really sure or secure. And what they're saying is um, if you can figure out a way to balance that by making sure that you keep your vibration high by thinking positively, seeing the best in everything and everyone, um, that you're going to fare a lot more easily and come out a lot more balanced in the month of March. Okay, so now I want to talk about your crystal of the month. It is so beautiful. Look at that. Isn't it so pretty and shiny? Don't you just love it? So this is called a celestial aura. It, some people think it looks like amethyst because it's purple, but it's more of a lavender. It might be hard to tell the difference. But anyway, what's the point? Why am I telling you about this? Um, a lot of reasons, actually. There's like a zillion reasons why crystals are helpful. But this will help you to align your chakras and to get that harmony and balance that you need. Um, this helps you become more aware of like your own spiritual gifts and your natural intuition. It helps you to trust other people, but it also helps you with discernment. It brings harmony into your home. Um, it helps you to feel more confident, as I mentioned, is needed. And it also helps with antisocial behaviors, which you might be inclined to if you're a single Capricorn, okay? So this is going to be very important for you. It helps you to detoxify and purify like your your areas in your chakras and your auras and stuff like that helps you with grief and loss, um, helps you to reevaluate your past situations. So if you're coupled, like, you know, forgiveness and things like that helps you to reframe those past situations, helps you to feel more self-aware. Um, and actually, if you're a crystal collector and you have moldavite that you use frequently, this potentiates that stone's ability. So Let's say that you're working with Moldavite. You put this with that. You Maybe you put it in a crystal grid or something like that. It amplifies it by like a zillion percent. And also, um, you know, stones come in different configurations. But one like this with your celestial aura specimen that I have in my hand right here, with all of these different points, I don't know if you can see that, um, it it like radiates energy out of each of those points. So it's a very powerful stone. So if you want to get this stone, that's on my website for purchase. And it comes with um, a full printout on the physical health benefits, emotional, spiritual health benefits, um, which angels are associated to it, how to best care for it, cleanse the energy from it, recharge the energy so it works to its mass maximum capacity. It's already cleansed and, and charged by the time that you get it though. Um, and it comes with a exclusive playlist that only Patreon subscribers get that tell you how to use the crystals. Um, like gives you thousands of different ideas on how to use them. Cause like maybe you're like, you know what, that crystal sounds really helpful, but I don't know how to use it. You'll get all of that information. So love and light and see you soon for love readings. Bye. Thanks so much for watching this video and getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20 minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!